So this video is about L'Hopital's rule, specifically the case where you have 0 times infinity or 0 times negative infinity, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's take a look at uh, a first example. So limit as x approaches pi over 4, uh, 1 minus tan of x times secant of 2x. And uh, I mean, I would prefer if it was like pi over 4 from the left or the right, but it's not. So uh, I just pulled the problem from a book. So we'll do it. Um, so the tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so you get 0. Uh, for that green part. And then the secant of 2 times pi over 4 is the secant of pi over 2. Uh, the cosine of pi over 2, or as x approaches pi over 2, cosine approaches 0. So secant will approach infinity because it's a reciprocal. Um, so we have 0 times infinity. Um, there is an issue of the left or the right, but we don't have to worry about that in this particular case. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to invert one of these two things. So what you want to do when you're choosing what to invert is uh, you want to um, invert means you know divide by the reciprocal of in this particular case. You want to pick something that you would want to take the derivative of. I would not want to take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus tan of x. Um, so I'm going to choose to um, invert the secant of 2x and go from there. So I have over and then it's 1 over secant of 2x. So if you algebraically simplify that, you go right back to the original. So that's good because it changes the way it looks, but not exactly what it is. Um, now we have 0 over 0 because the uh, infinity that was in the numerator becomes 1 over infinity in the denominator, which is 0. So 0 over 0. Um, so I'm going to use, well actually I'm going to simplify this again. So 1 over secant of 2x is just cosine of 2x. And this looks sort of manageable. So use L'Hopital's rule. And it's going to give me the derivative of the top is negative secant squared of x over the derivative of the bottom is negative 2 sine of 2x. And now I'm going to try substituting. And when I do in this case, I end up with uh, negative 2 in the numerator because the secant of pi over 4 is radical 2, square it to get 2, and the negative. And then in the denominator, I end up with um, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so just negative 2. So I get 1. And that's the value of the limit. So let's take a look at one more. So x is going to infinity this time of x sine of pi over x. So x goes to infinity, so we get infinity times, and then if x goes to infinity, uh, pi over x goes to 0, sine of 0 is 0. So infinity times 0. So that's a L'Hopital situation. So in this case, I would prefer to invert the x, so I will. So I have sine of pi over x, and then it's over 1 over x. So now when I take the limit, I actually end up with 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. Right, because the infinity that was in the numerator is now 1 over infinity, or 0, in the denominator. I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule, because I have the indeterminate form I want. So the derivative of the top is cosine of pi over x times negative pi over x squared. And in the bottom, you get negative 1 over x squared. What's nice is, with all these trig limits, um, when you invert, typically what happens is the chain rule will cancel out the denominator for you. Um, and that's what happens here. So simplifying that, I'm left with just cosine, uh, uh, pi times cosine of pi over x, uh, because the negative 1 over x squared is canceled. And I can evaluate, so pi over x goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. Um, so cosine of 0 is 1, so we just end up with pi times 1, which is pi. All right, so that's uh, two examples for you of how to handle the 0 times infinity case. So I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.